Everybody has heard of the B-movie, and most of you probably remember the first line. According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way that a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway. From when I first watched this movie, I had always wondered what caused them to say this, and how did bees fly if this was true? I thought this was the perfect opportunity to ask that question. But you ask, what's the point of researching the first line of a kid's movie? This movie is arguably one of the most recognisable movies and first lines of a movie ever. In fact, I did a quick survey of 33 people from the ages of 14 to 20 and to get their views on the movie, and 42% of them could roughly quote the first line. Further to this, 63.6% of people said the B-movie was one of humanity's greatest accomplishments. The popularity of the movie is definitely there to justify a research project into the first line, but still, what's the point? Answering the question of how bees fly will not solve any of humanity's current issues and probably won't help us develop any new tech. There is, however, a large monetary incentive. With all of the love of the B-movie, lots of people have tried to test different elements of it and gained huge amounts of views on videos discussing this. For example, the channel I Did A Thing on YouTube got 1.2 million views when testing the line, you like jazz? The channel Legal Eagle got 2.3 million views when discussing the feasibility of the court case in the movie, and the channel The Film Theorists got 8.3 million views when testing the myth in the film that when the bees stopped working, all the flowers died. As you can see from these case studies, the market for testing is out there, but very few people are capitalising on it. If we break into this market, the return on investment for this project could be tenfold. Before we look at how bees fly, we need to know the basic principles of flight. Newton's first law tells us that an object will remain at a constant speed unless acted on by an unbalanced force. This means if we want a bee to fly, we need to have a force in the upwards direction with a vertical component greater than its weight for takeoff or equal to its weight for level flight. Planes do this by using the shape of the wing to slow down air at the top of the wing and speed up air underneath. This creates an air pressure difference, and as pressure equals force over area, it means there is a greater force on the bottom of the wing than on the top, so lift is generated. However, this only works when a plane is moving forwards, but bees can hover. Bees create the pressure difference by moving their wings up and down. The pressure on the side of the wing that is facing the direction of travel is increased as the air underneath it is compressed, and vice versa for the other side. This pressure difference has the same effect as the one on the plane and lift is generated. If the force of lift is greater than the bee's weight, it flies. So, how do we work out how bees fly? Let's start at the very simplest level, just to see if this is a stupid question, by creating a free body diagram for bees if we assume that they flap their wings in the same way as birds, straight up and down. To do this we need to know a few things. The weight of a bee, 0.1 grams. The area of its wings, 1.06 centimetres squared. The rate at which it flaps them, 230 beats per minute. I tried to work these out myself, but had little luck as I, as I was constrained by equipment, so I found the data online. Now we can use this data to work out the resultant forces on a bee. I am aware that this is a gross oversimplification, but I have to keep the video short. At this point, I went away to go and find out how to calculate lift from flapping wings, and realised that I had severely underestimated the complexity of this issue. There are a whole load of other factors that affect the lift of a flapping wing, like angle of attack, and the height of the flap, and the temperature of the air that I hadn't considered. If you want to find out more about this topic, check out these links to the papers on the flight of fruit flies and butterflies. One thing that had become evident while looking at these papers was that insects do not flap their wings in the same way as birds. If you look at a video of a fly flapping its wings in slow motion, you will see that it moves them in an arc. Bees do a similar thing to this, but they only form a half arc, which is less efficient but allows them to carry heavier loads. You must also keep in mind that bees' wings are not rigid. They are split in two along a flexible joint and have a smaller and a large wing. This allows the bee to form a V-shape with its wings to generate more pressure on the downward stroke, creating a larger amount of lift. It is the combination of their flapping style and wing shape that allows them to fly with such tiny wings. I would love to have been able to prove how they fly mathematically, but it was some extremely complicated aerodynamics, so I hope the theory is enough. Thank you for watching my breakdown of the first line of the bee movie and how bees flies. I hope you learned something new today.